Good morning, Grace Central Coast. Whether you're worshiping at Five Cities Campus, Slow Campus, or at the North County Campus, I want to greet you. My name is Ben Collins, and I'm the campus pastor down at the Five Cities Campus. And you are here this morning as we continue our series called SOMA, which is all about how the church is a body and not a building. It's not a structure that's physically out there, inanimate, on a, on a street corner. It's a body. It's a living, active, dynamic thing. And that has been the focus of our series. And thus far, we've talked about how the body is connected and how the body is also gifted. And yet this morning, we're going to talk about how the body is growing. It's meant to grow. And so, just as we get going, I want to ask you this question. What is your growth plan? How would you grow in your walk with God? What, what, what plan do you have? When would that happen? How is that going to take place? Now, in all of those thoughts that may have come to your mind, are you thinking about how other people are a part of your growth plan? Who is going to help you grow? Before I ask that question, who is going to help you grow? What were you thinking? Were you thinking about just my kind of Bible reading plan, my prayer time, this, things that I, these things that I do individually? But are you also thinking about who is around you? Who is coming to you? Who are you going towards as part of your growth? That is our focus this morning, is that God has intended the, his body, the body of Christ, to grow together, to grow as we live life together. And I forgot to mention and introduce Sammy to you. Sammy has been part of our SOMA series talking about how the various parts of the body are connected to one another and how this morning we're talking about how this whole body, how Sammy's whole body grows together. And so even though this morning we've said and that this series is all about how the church is a body and not a building, you might rephrase that to say that sure, the church is a body, not a building, but that body better be building itself up. It better be growing. Yeah, it's not a building, a physical structure, but it needs to be building itself up. It needs to be growing. And last week, Pastor Tim spoke about the various gifts we've all received. And today, we will see that those gifts are clearly not an end in and of themselves. You haven't become a good steward of God's gift to you if you have just identified the gift. That's a part of the step. It's important. But you need to do more than just identify it. And also, you need to do more than just use your gift for your own ends, for your own individual benefit. Gifts are not an end in and of themselves. They have a goal, and that goal is growth for the whole body of Christ. And that is our focus this morning. But before we get to this idea of growth, I want to talk about where we are as we approach Ephesians chapter 4. So let me just set up the book of Ephesians really quick. So Paul is the, this apostle. Paul is the one who went and established the church in Ephesus. And Paul is now writing back to that church in Ephesus, and it's in the book called Ephesians. And so Paul is writing to a largely non-Jewish audience about the riches, the inheritance that they have in Christ, who is the victorious one over the grave, who is now seated in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority, and how the gospel has brought these Ephesians who were far off, apart from the redemption history of God, who was mainly working through his people Israel to be a beacon of hope and light and truth to the world, but it was really just through that one nation, the nation of Israel, these people in Ephesus, they weren't part of that nation in large part. And so he's saying, you who were far off have been brought near. You who were separated have been brought together. You have been united. And how by faith, the, these believers in Ephesus, these saints and the Jews are now one in Christ. Where there once was hostility, there's now peace. Once there was, once was disunity, there's now unity. There's love. There's togetherness. 
They are now together, all part of that same body of Christ, the new man in Christ Jesus. And so, in Ephesians, we have six chapters, and the first three are all about explanations of what the gospel is and the riches, the beauties, the truths of the gospel. That's what is all about chapter three, chapters one through three. And then chapters four through six are all the implications. So since all of this is true about the gospel, since all of this is beautiful about the gospel, since you have been united to Christ and this is what all that means, therefore now live this way. Live this way. These are the implications for the lives of the Ephesians and for us, those who have found Jesus and are seeking to follow Jesus with our lives. And we know that this is what's happening in chapter 4 because of how Paul begins it. He begins it by saying, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. That's chapter 4, verse 1. So the idea, again, is because of who you have become in Christ, now show who you've become by the way that you live. May the way that you live match who you are in Jesus. That is the flow of the book of Ephesians. And so, as as we come here in looking at these first 16 verses of chapter 4, we're really looking at the application of the gospel to life for the Ephesians and for us today. And so, the main focus in those first 16 verses is really on the unity of the body of Christ. And we see that primarily in the first six verses where we read that these two, peop- these two separate groups that have been brought together in Christ, now there is one body, one spirit, just as you were called to one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all. So, The emphasis on unity is really strong here in those first six verses. And this, that focus on unity there with those seven statements of oneness in Christ is followed uniquely by a a focus on diversity. So that within the body of Christ, there is this unity, but there's also a diversity, which is what is necessary for there to be harmony. So there's unity and diversity, but together, they work together for harmony. And so that is a diversity, that diversity is really a diversity in function. It's a diversity of gifts that serve and uphold and further and grow the unity of the body of Christ. And that begins in verse 7, and that is where we encounter our first truth of four truths about growing. And so that's what we're going to be focusing on this morning, four truths about growing in the body of Christ. And the first is found in verses 7 through 12, and it's this. The body of Christ can grow because Jesus gives each member gifts. The body of Christ can grow because Jesus gives each member gifts. So everyone has a gift. We, Pastor Tim talked about this last week. We're going to talk about it here again. Verse 7, but grace was given to each one of us, every single one of us in Christ, according to the measure of Christ's gifts. So Jesus gave gifts to every single one of us, and it was up to him as to what gift was given. And yet we see that those gifts, they have a variety of, of functions, and that gifts are for growth. Gifts are for growth. They're not an end in and of themselves. They have a purpose. Jesus wanted to do something with these gifts. He wanted them to bring about growth. And we see that primarily in verses 11 and 12. And and it says this, And he, being Jesus, gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds and teachers, and he gave those gifts to equip the saints all those others in the body of Christ, so for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. You see that purpose there? So that the saints may be equipped 
For what? For the work of the ministry? Unto what end? So that they might build up together, all of them together, not just the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, but everyone. The work of the ministry is to build up the body of Christ. That's what it's all about. And so, the, that is, the gifts are for growth. Growth towards what? To what end? Well, we get an idea. See, we've talked about how it's for building up, but what is the growth towards? What does it mean to build up the body of Christ? What does that mean? What, what, is, what kind of building up is happening here? To what end? And we get a hint of it in verses 8 through 10 of chapter 4. Where it says, therefore it says, when Jesus ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower regions, namely the earth? He who descended is the one who also ascended far above all the heavens. For what purpose? Why did he ascend above all the heavens? Why did he go up there and give all these gifts? Here's the reason for the growth that he might fill all things. What does that mean? (laughs) What is this filling? What does it mean that Jesus, after he ascended, went up to this place above all the heavens, above every name, every ruler and authority, that he might fill all things? Fill it up with what? Fill all things with what? Well, we're helped because Paul uses this idea of filling in other places in in, in, in the book of Ephesians. And we see that filling being talked about in chapter 1. You can just look, it's right across my page, verses 22 and 23. And Jesus, oh sorry, and God the Father put all things under Jesus' feet. So again, him being ascended, being up there in authority, and gave him, the Father gave Jesus as head over all things to the church, the church which is his body, which is the fullness of him who fills all in all. Whoa, (laughs) there's a lot going on here. Let me say that last part again. The church is the body of Christ, which is the fullness of Jesus, who who fills all in all. So, That's where we get a hint of what this growing is for. It's growing to be able to fulfill this purpose of Jesus, to fill all things. So the church, I think, is being talked about here as being, as filling all things by being Christ in all things, in every place. So we are to be the presence of Christ in this world, to fill all things with Christ That's God's plan, is to fill all things through the body of Christ, with Christ. As we live out our lives as Christ would live, we fill all things with Christ. That's God's plan. That's his intent. And so, we've seen that the body of of Christ can grow because Jesus gives each member's each member gifts. They, it can grow. The body of Christ can grow. It should grow. As those gifts are being used, it should bring about growth. And we've seen a glimmer of what that growth is about. It's about this growth towards being like Christ. And that brings us to our second truth about our growing, which is the goal of the body of Christ's growth is Christ. The goal of the body of Christ's growth is Christ. It's His fullness experienced and lived out together by the church, by us, by you and me. And that in that growth, we are the fullness, we are the presence of Christ. We're growing towards Christ-likeness together. Not just individually, but together. Because not any one of us can fully be the body of Christ, can fully be the presence of Christ on our own. We need one another to communicate. This just makes sense. For us to communicate an eternal, beautiful, infinite God, we need all of us, especially in our brokenness. We, every single one of us needs to be involved in communicating the beauty, the, the infinity of who God is in his splendor, in his majesty, in his care, in his, in, in his power, in his compassion, in his truth. 
the goal of the body of Christ, growth is Christ. And we see this in both verse 13 and verse 15. So we're talking about this equipping that happens where certain gifts have been given, which are really foundational gifts. Those apostles, prophets, they're the ones like Paul used the gift of apostleship to plant the church in Ephesus. And then from there, there were other, other gifts that were given through the Spirit of God to equip those people so that there could be a thriving, stable body of Christ. But then within all of that, all those people are equipped. They're also all given gifts so that together they might live out their, their faith and their walk together in a way that, that shows Christ to the world. And then here we're seeing that, the, that what that looks like, what that means is that they are growing towards Christ, into Christ. And so they're building up the body of Christ for what? Look at verse 13. Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To, so from that, unity of the faith, knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood or to a mature person, to the measure of the stature of, of the fullness of Christ. And then verse 15. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way into Him, Christ, who is the head into Christ. We are to grow up in every way towards Him, to be like Him. So, we've seen that it's clearly the goal to grow, and, that, and now we're seeing that that growth means growing towards Christ. It doesn't mean getting bigger. It doesn't mean getting better necessarily in some kind of uh, undefined way. What is the goal of our growth? Growth, it, it also isn't an end in and of itself, just like gifts aren't. Gifts aren't an end in and of themselves, but growth, just, hey, we're growing, great. Well, growth is successful not just if you're growing, but growth is successful if you're growing towards your intended goal. If you're moving towards your intended goal, then that's true growth. And what is that goal? It's to be Christ's fullness, all that he is, together in the world. And so, what that looks like are a few things. One is, that means aiming at unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. We are united in what we believe about Christ. That is something that moves us towards being the fullness of Christ. That moves us towards reaching our goal. Actually having defined doctrine, defined teaching of what we believe. You can read that on the back of your worship folder each and every week here at Grace Central Coast. Our declaration of faith, what we say that we stand by. And so what this passage is saying is that as we unite around a set of around faith and around a set of, of beliefs about who Jesus is, that actually furthers our growing towards the fullness of Christ. Second, we see that we are called to aim at maturity, and then in verse 15 it tells us to do that in every way. So to aim, we're supposed to aim at maturity. Growing here is not just growing in size. Like, well, we, we, growth, growth here doesn't mean we're just adding in more members. We want more people to go. No, it's, it's character development. It's who you are becoming through the Spirit of God at work in you and through others around you who we together are becoming. We're aiming at maturity in every way. Growth is... is really coming from childlikeness towards maturity, from what we see as instability towards stability, or vulnerability to strength, from ignorance to knowledge, from disagreement to agreement, from disconnectedness to connectedness, from isolation to community. That movement, that's the growth that God's calling all of us to. And note here that we are called towards mature manhood or to become a mature person not mature persons we are together looking to 
as the body of Christ, our corporate on all three campuses here at Grace Central Coast, what is our maturity as the body of Christ? And, you know, this is really kind of like us meeting developmental milestones as the body of Christ in our body. And, you know, I I actually had the opportunity one day, I was out in the front of our house, out on the, the driveway there, and my son Keller was there, and he was, he had learned to walk just a little bit ago, and he had figured out what it meant to jump, but he couldn't quite jump, and I actually captured it on video. I didn't have the ability to show it to you, but it's so cute because he's, he's trying to jump. He knows that he wants to jump, and he's like moving, but he can't. He can't actually leave the ground. He's trying, and he needs to develop, but he's, he's trying to move forward, and that's the same kind of thing that we're looking to do is to gain an ability to do more, to, be, to meet those developmental milestones towards Christ-likeness so that as we look at one another, we see Christ, and as the world looks at us, they see a more perfect picture of Christ. So, and now my son Clay is actually trying to jump. He's trying to figure it out too. He can't quite do it yet. <laughs> But it's really cute, and yet they need to grow, and so do we. And, and so, and then finally, this idea of to what degree are we to grow? Up to the fullness of Christ. Not just so that we might kind of look like Jesus, but to the fullness, the full array of who Jesus Christ is. That, every single expression. If you read all that he's done, all that he did in the world while he was here on earth in his first coming, all the ways that he interacted with people, all the encounters that people had with him, where he spoke softly and sternly, where he always pursued the truth, where he, we're not just aiming at some nebulous maturity, but towards who Jesus is in all that he did, the fullness of him, and not just in a certain time, but in all time, in our whole lives. This is a big goal. It's a big goal. It's a huge goal. But it must be attainable. Otherwise, Paul is just, he's just giving them a false hope. Hey, do this. It's actually impossible. That's not we, we can't come to that conclusion. We have to believe that this is possible. We have to believe that we are, that this is attainable, that, and this is something that we should strive for. And the main reason that we should believe that is because the Spirit of Jesus is within each and every one of us. Giving us the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control, all the things that Jesus had at all times and every place, we, through the Spirit and the power of God, are able to be that towards one another and towards the watching world. Up to the fullness of Christ. It's a huge goal. There's nothing higher. And that's our aim. And we're able to aim that high because God is with us. God is enabling us. And, you know, I think that one of the things that this idea of aiming towards the fullness of Christ, aiming towards character development, maturing in our faith, in our expression of our faith as a body of Christ, that helps me with the mysteries of life. When times are really hard, and and it's like when you're asking that question, why is this happening? How could this be good? when there's not a clear, obvious, good result. You know, you're sharing the gospel and it creates hardness in someone's heart rather than softness. When uh, an illness, some malady is just upon you, like, why is this here? What is this for? I think that as we consider that the goals of God are not... <laughs> even primarily the tangible results, measurable results of what he's doing through us, but actually the character development, the Christ-likeness that he's building within us, when we remember all the scorn, 
all the hate, all the trouble, all the hardship that Christ endured, and we know that our goal is to become like Christ, we should expect suffering. We should expect hardship, and we should know, we should be able to know that together we are moving towards a Christ-likeness, and that when things feel most mysterious, we can say, God, I know that you say that you work all things together for the good of those who love you and are called according to your purpose, being which is to be conformed to the image of your son. We can say, I don't know. This is, would be a great prayer that I've prayed. God, I don't know why you're doing this. I don't know why this is happening to me, but I, wanna, I want this not to be wasted. I want you to use this, God. Make me more like Christ through this. Make us, when our church is experiencing hardship, make us more like Christ through this. Maybe my hardship or maybe your hardship is for me. Maybe I need someone in a place of difficulty so that I can use my gifts because that is going to help me be more like Christ. And you need to be in a place of receiving gifts. God has a plan, and I think that when we see that God is after character development, these things that aren't quantifiable, but, are, but are, are things that we can identify as development of who we are, that helps us with mysteries in life. Our third point is, without growing in the body of Christ, you're defenseless. This is our third truth. Without growing in the body of Christ, you are defenseless. You're not just maybe in trouble. It's not just, hey, watch out, be on guard. No, it's you are defenseless. You can't grow on your own. You don't have the gifts in and of yourself to become mature in Christ. Isolation is a killer in the body of Christ. You leave yourself defenseless. And we see all of this in verse 14. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that's what we're aiming for, so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves, carried about by every wind of doctrine. Not by some wind, but by every wind of doctrine. Not maybe tossed about, but truly tossed about to and fro, and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness in deceitful schemes. Things of error, falsehood, is you are defenseless against falsehood if you are not growing in the body of Christ. That's the point of that section right there, of that verse. If you think that you can if you think that you can achieve all that Christ intends for you to achieve in your life, on your own, in isolation, detached from community, you're like a child. You're defenseless. You're unstable. You're not safe. And you are being deceived right now. Now, the fact that you're here is good. The fact that you're here in the body of Christ, worshiping on a Sunday, that's good. That's going to, that's going to push against becoming a child. That's going to push against becoming defenseless. But how consistent are you here? How consistently are you here? How consistently do you have overlap with others in the body of Christ where you're actually not just overlap in like high by, but contact, community, fellowship, use of gifts, gifts going one way, gifts going another way, inflow and outflow as Tim talked about next, last week. If you don't have that, then you're unstable. There, there was a period in my life when I was in college where I was, I was attending uh, a growth group. I was attending Sunday mornings. I was, I was working on staff here. And yet, I didn't have an intimacy where I was, I was able to be exchanging the gifts of God with other people in a vibrant, meaningful way that was transforming who I was. And that became a very dry and times dark season for me. I've been there. I felt the isolation. Are you there right now? Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. We need you. I need you. And you need me. And we need you. And you need us. You're being deceived. You're like a child. 
by God's incredible grace, we, were, we scored some tickets to Disneyland this last week. It was awesome. Well, I took, took my, our three kids and my eldest son, Keller, who's three and a half. He's really tall, so he's like 42 inches, so he can go on anything. Didn't take him on Space Mountain. That probably would have been a mistake. But I did take him on Star Tours, and he loved it. But in that, he showed this I- idea of how children can be deceived perfectly. We're, we sit down. I'm like, all right, bud, we're going to get in the spaceship. He's like, cool, awesome. And then the screen pulls back. You got, you know, C-3PO over here ready to, you know, pilot us out on this mission. And we go through this mission. We're going from one planet to another, light speed, blah, blah, blah. And at the end, we go bing, bing, bing across the water and, and into this, this hangar on some foreign island. And, and then we like stop and the, and the ride ends. And he looks at me, he's like, how are we going to get back to Disneyland? <laughs> it's like, like as, a, as an animator, you're like, yes, it worked perfect. This is great. But for him, he was so duped, so deceived by what was going on in front of him that he literally believed that he was across the galaxy somewhere and had, he was like, how am I going to get back to Disneyland? You guys, that is the kind of vulnerability. That's the kind of defenselessness that happens to us when we are not growing in the body of Christ. So, how about those around you who aren't growing in the body of Christ? People that you know, like I have a number of friends from school and high school and, and college who are de-churched, who are no longer growing in the body of Christ in a meaningful, active, involved, contributing to one another, meeting the needs of others, using their gifts kind of way. Who do you know? Do you, does it bother you that they are defenseless? It bothers me. God, help me. Help us. They are in danger. What are we going to do about it? Let's go after them. Let's pursue those lost sheep. Let's bring them back so that we can have rejoicing. Let's pray for them. So, instead of being deceived and defenseless in isolation, Paul says that we are to grow towards Christ through truth with love together. And this is our last point. This is how we grow. This is how the body of Christ together grows. And this is the fourth point. The body of Christ will grow itself as it uses each gift with love. And that with love part is so key, so important. The body of Christ will grow itself as it uses each gift with love. Speaking the truth in love is what we see in verse 15. So instead of being deceived by falsehood, instead of being like a child, rather by, this is what it means, by speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way, into him, into Christ, who is the head. So, by speaking the truth in love, in love, that is how we grow up into him, by speaking the truth in love. Not just the truth, but truth that is aiming at benefiting another. That is how the body grows up in Christ. So, ask yourself this question, who is speaking the truth to you? Who are you speaking the truth to? Is it being done in love or is it being done to demonstrate your gift or your knowledge that, it's, that you're cool, slick, or better, better than? Let's not go there. Let's not let our, our truth be detached from love. Otherwise, that truth is spoiled. It's not going to do what it was intended to do. Without love, the truth is spoiled. It's got to be done with love. It's got to be done with an aim of benefiting the other. And the body of Christ must grow itself believing that every single connection has been skillfully, intentionally, and strategically joined and held together. We see this in the next part of the verse. From whom, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined, that's being joined and being held together by every joint with which it is equipped when each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. 
You see, this is all about make, these things are what make the body grow so that it builds itself up in love, so that we are more of the fullness of Christ together. And so, if you don't think you fit, you do. You're needed. If you don't think you are, then you are questioning the design of Christ. He is the builder. He's the one who has, as we've seen in, in Psalm 139, we were knitted together in our mother's womb. Jesus Christ has knitted us together in the body of Christ. Here, you are needed. Every single connection needs to be made for the body to really grow. It will grow. It can grow, but it will grow when every single connection, every single member is using their gifts for the benefit of others, using those gifts in love, with the aim of love, with the aim of serving another's needs. This all makes the body grow. Those gifts need to be used properly for, and that is in love. It's, it's accented again at the very end, so that it builds itself up in love. Oh, Lord, keep us from using gifts, from using knowledge to puff ourselves up above others in the body of Christ. May our knowledge, may our skills, may our abilities, our capacities, our gifting, may it all, God, God, use it not to show off, but to serve. That is how the body will grow. That's how we will grow. I need your gift. I need, I need it. I need it. I don't know what it is, but I need it. That's what the Bible says right here. And Jesus has put the family of Grace Central Coast together so that every single person is needed here. But here's the, here's the truth, and this is how we'll close. You'll only do this when you recall how Jesus used all of his gifts for you. When you recall how far from God you were on your own, and yet how the one with all the gifts came not to be served, oh yes, but to serve, to give his life as a ransom for many not to show off his gifts, to show off his power, to take the, the bait that Satan was dangling in front of him out there in the wilderness. Hey, serve me and I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth. You don't have to die, just bow to me. No, no, no. Rather, how he used all that power, all that authority, all that giftedness to become the head of the whole new person, the body of Christ, though it cost him his body, battered, bruised, cursed, crowned with thorns on a cross. He used all that power by restraining all that power, to restrain all of his power so that he could be put up on a cross for me and you. The one who became defenseless like a child at the hands of humanity, at the hands of you and me, that we might no longer be defenseless. Church, will you listen to the words of this king? Will you take part in his plan to fill all things through his body, the church? Will you be a part of that body's growth through pursuing peace and unity, faith and love in the form of committed beliefs about Christ and committed relationships within the body of Christ? Are you willing to commit to beliefs and to one another? I need you. We need you. You need me. You need us. We need each other if we are going to grow towards the fullness of Christ. Let's pray. Father, we come before you. We're thankful for your word that calls us to live life together, that calls us to grow, to, that calls us to use our gifts towards growth, that gives us the goal of our growth, which is living out at the life of Christ through our life together towards one another, and in the sight of the world. Oh God, give us the grace. May we remember how far we were from you, how you, the one with all the gifts, use them not for yourself, but for us. Oh God, may we be set free, not to use our gifts for our own individual ends, but for the end of you and of one another, which are the same thing, building up the body of Christ. Oh God, help us. I need your help. And Lord, for those who 
have moved away from the church, those who are maybe here this morning who are attending, but it's very infrequent. Oh God, may they see that they're needed. May they see that they're welcome. May they see that they're a valuable, vital member of the body of Christ here at Grace Central Coast. I pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen.